Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here, back again with another Dreams tutorial. Today we'll be going over something a little different, we'll be going over some painting techniques. We'll go over some optimizations, and also just some techniques to get some cool special effects. We'll be going over how to make these things in the next couple of videos. And the important thing to remember is, you may not want to draw these things specifically, but this tutorial will take you through some of the techniques that you'll need to know to get the effects you're after. You can see we've got a heart rate monitor over here, a random flower, a sphere which I'll take you through a few versions of, we've got my snow globe here which is remixable, how to get cylindrical shapes and some special effects with those as well, and just a couple of other random little bits on top. We've got some particle effects, a bit of a timer, and we'll also be going over how to make some stars. Lastly I'll take you through a bit of an explosion. First of all I'll go through some terminology so you know what I'm saying through the tutorial. We'll be going over paintings today, but paintings are comprised of flecks. You can see here this is a painting, but also a single fleck. A painting can be comprised of multiple flecks, and the more flecks a painting has within it, the more expensive it will be on your frame rate. This also isn't entirely true though, there are ways around this which I'll show you as well. First of all we'll go through some optimizations. So you can see here I've got two paintings, they both have the clone feature turned on, so there's lots and lots of copies of them. And the purpose of these was to max out the painting's thermometer. You can see this second painting over here is not drawing properly, because there are too many flecks on the screen at once. We only have two paintings, but they have a lot of flecks within them. Now you might think, well I've hit the painting's limit now, I can't use any more paintings. That sucks. But the way the engine deals with the flecks, is that it will only draw the flecks that are on the screen at the time. You can see that if I turn away from this painting over here, more of the flex from the second copy will draw, and we've got far less flex on the screen than we did before, so it's able to draw the entire second painting. It will also not draw flex that are behind solid objects, like sculpts. So we've still got the same two painting copies here, but if I hide one of them behind the wall, we can hide so much of it away that it draws the entire other painting. This opens up huge possibilities for the use of flex, because you can just pack so many in a scene. They also have their own graphics thermometer. What this means is we can pack our scene full of sculptures and max out the graphics thermometer, but then still add paint to the scene afterwards to add more effects or whatever else you can think of to make with paint. There's also another way we can decrease the amount of flex on the screen, and that's by using the pulse option to hide some of the flex away. You can see that if we turn pulse on, it will immediately get rid of our warning. This is because only half of the fleck that we were originally seeing is showing. We can decrease this even further, you can see we can fit many many more copies of that on the screen now, because it's only rendering the parts of the painting that are showing at the time. You'll see that warning pop up specifically in edit mode a lot, and even more so if you have preview and visibility turned on, because this will show emitted paintings, and all parts of the painting that aren't usually showing from a pulse. Also note that cloned paintings don't count towards their graphics thermometer cost. Only unique paintings will count towards this graphics memory total. So if you can reuse a painting, reuse it. First of all we'll just go through how to make a painting that animates in sequence. You can see our painting here is comprised of multiple strokes, and all of these strokes are playing in the sequence that we've drawn them. We'll jump into paint mode here, we'll go into our guides and turn on surface snap, and I do like to use the ruler for this, you can obviously draw whatever you like. So I'm just going to do a really dodgy heart rate monitor here, we'll just get our ruler and draw along the lines, and that will be the shape for our animation. Now let's go and get this animating. We'll jump into play mode and increase the playback speed a bit, and we'll want this to pulse, so we'll turn that on, and that doesn't look so great. So what it's doing here is it's pulsing each of the individual strokes that we've drawn. So you can see this first line here was one stroke, the next one up was another stroke, and then down was a stroke as well. We don't want these strokes to all play at once, we want them to play in sequence. So we'll hit this animate in sequence button here, and this will let us animate the entire painting in a sequence, as opposed to individually. We can play with the playback speed of course, get that going a bit faster, and that is basically how you would make something like that. The animate in sequence option is very important for a couple of the other examples that we'll be going through. Now we'll go over the flower. Back in our paint mode, our guides are still active from the last time we were in paint mode, so we've still got the snap to surface turned on. I do like to draw paintings on a flat surface just because it does give you a lot more accuracy, 
So unless you're doing a 3D painting, I would recommend turning on the surface snap. So for this, we're going to be using the kaleidoscope. Now, one very important thing to note with the kaleidoscope is that your first stamp with the paintbrush will be where the kaleidoscope originates from. So let's say that we want this to be the center of our painting. We'll stamp down our initial fleck just there, and that will now be the center of our kaleidoscope. Now with our kaleidoscope turned on, you can see that it's actually kaleidoscoping around the wrong way. This is a really easy fix. We'll just scope out, and then with the grid turned on, we'll rotate that fleck 90 degrees so that it's facing us. Then we'll jump back in, and it will now be oriented correctly. So I've just turned the grid off, and I do like to do these sort of paintings with the draw flex option. This lets you change the size of your paintbrush as you're drawing. So we can start out really small and then get large at the end or whatever you like. So we'll start out with the flower. We've got our kaleidoscope set to 15. This does go all the way up to 32 though. So you can have this at whatever you like. We'll start from the center and draw out and then just join these to make some petals. Obviously you can spend as much time on this as you'd like. I'm just gonna make a really basic one this time. And we can also have different colors within the same painting. So we'll add some red in here as well. And let's just finish it with some blue. So we've got our shape here now. We don't really need this center fleck anymore that we stamped initially to set our kaleidoscope. So we can delete that fleck just with the triangle. And now we're left with just our painting. In the animation tab, we can turn up the playback speed and turn on the pulse option. You can get some really awesome effects with the pulse option. So always give that a try just to see what you get. We can then play with the trail length to determine how much of the painting is shown at once. And if we turn on the animate in sequence and turn the speed all the way up, it'll draw the flower as we drew it. The hue cycle option is also a great way to get some extra effects out of the same painting. You can get totally different looks all from the one cloned painting so it doesn't take up any extra painting thermometer. Next up, we've got a few spheres. I'll show you how to make these now. So we've got our sphere sculpt here, which is what we'll be using for the base of our painting. Now, actually what we'll wanna do first up is align the grid to this sphere. So if we turn the grid on, hold down shift, which is L1 on the DS4 and press triangle, it will align the grid to our sphere here. You can see that dot is in the very center of our sphere. Now, if we jump into paint mode again, with our grid mode still turned on, we'll stamp our first fleck down on the very top of the sphere. We know this fleck is in the very center because it's aligned to the grid. Now, if we turn on our kaleidoscope, you can see that it's sending the flex in the wrong direction again. So we'll just need to rotate that 90 degrees once more, once we scope out, rotate it 90 degrees and scope back into the painting. And then that will be oriented correctly. Now we'll make these flex a little bit smaller and turn the kaleidoscope up to 25, maybe even as high as it'll go, just to 32. We'll start our painting at the very bottom and drag up just like so. And we'll want to do this in one stroke. So just angle your camera upwards slowly. This does take a little bit of finesse. It may take you a little bit of time, but that's fine. And that's all we need. Now we can delete our origin fleck that we started our kaleidoscope with, and we're left with a painting sphere. I'll turn that white just so it's a bit easier to see, and we'll jump into the clone mode, and we'll clone this around a cylinder. The clones also work off the same axis that the kaleidoscope works from. So because we've used our kaleidoscope around this axis, the rotation will also work around this axis. So if we turn on the rotational duplicates for around a cylinder, it will fill in our sphere. Ideally, you'll want to turn the copies down as far as you can without seeing gaps in the painting. And that for us this time is four. The reason for that is the more overlapping flex you have, the more expensive it will be on your frame rate. So we'll want to have as few overlapping flex as we can. Basically, the way this works is the smaller the flex are, the smoother the sphere will be. It may take a little bit of extra time with some smaller flex to get it perfect, but the smaller they are, the smoother it will come out in the end. So with this sphere, we can do some cool things. If we jump into the animation tab and increase the playback speed a bit, we can't see that right now because we can't see any of the individual flex. If we turn on pulse mode, you can see the painting will animate from where we started to where we finished with the stroke. If we turn on animate in sequence and crank the playback speed all the way up, because that makes it draw much, much more slowly. We can see the painting is now drawn around in a circle. We can play around with the trail length and make that really small to make it look a bit like a skipping rope or something. And the option down the bottom here as well with the time offset will offset the playback time of the clones. So if we increase this, you can see the clones of the painting are playing at a different time to the original. 
but if we completely decrease this, the clones will play at the same time as the original. So we'll turn the animation off for now, and we'll turn Pulse back off as well, just to make it completely solid again. And we'll go into the Effects menu, and see some of the effects that we can get. First of all, we'll turn down the opacity a bit, just so that it goes a bit see-through. And you can play around with the sliders, just to get some interesting effects. It's kind of cool if we make that blue, or something like that, and give it a bit of glow. The more glow you add, the less transparent it will be, so just be aware of that. So this is just a really quick example of something that you can make. We can of course add some animation to that as well, make it look pretty cool. Add a pulse in, you can decrease the trail length. There really is a lot of variation you can get from these, so just have a play around with them and see what you can make. Lastly with this VR, We'll go through some of the interesting things you can do with the stroke properties. We'll manipulate this end point. This will mean that our sphere will slowly form from the bottom up. We can do the same thing for the start point and make it fade away from the bottom. Because the flex are a little more condensed at the top and the bottom, you may want to turn on the fade in and the fade out option, just so that it looks a little more even across the board. This is the same technique I use to make the snow globe. Now we do have a few more things to go through here guys. I'll follow this one up with the part 2, where we take a look at a few more painting techniques to get some particle effects, stars, a circular timer, and a couple of other little special effects too. Stay tuned for that episode. If this video helped at all guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.